nằm trong chuỗi hoạt động đào tạo bồi dưỡng định kỳ của nhà xuất bản giáo dục Việt Nam. Hôm nay, nhà xuất bản giáo dục Việt Nam phối hợp với tập đoàn giáo dục Mark Milan của Anh Quốc tổ chức buổi hội thảo tập huấn dạy học sách giáo khoa tiếng Anh để chia sẻ các phương pháp và kỹ thuật dạy học áp dụng cụ thể vào bài học của sách. Đồng thời, chúng tôi cũng muốn lắng nghe các ý kiến của các thầy cô trong quá trình triển khai sách và để chúng tôi cảm thâm, thấu hiểu và có thể đồng hành, hỗ trợ với các thầy cô một cách hiệu quả nhất. Và xin trân trọng giới thiệu với các thầy cô À, đến dự buổi tập huấn ngày hôm nay các chuyên gia của chúng tôi à, trân trọng giới thiệu Mr. John Croft à, chuyên gia và quản lý cấp cao về xây dựng và phát triển sự nghiệp giáo dục châu Á Hi John Hello Hi How are you <cười> Vâng à, chúng tôi xin trân trọng giới thiệu Miss Hồ Hạc Bảo Quyên à, trưởng đại diện Macmillan Education tại Việt Nam Hi Quyên Yeah À, về phía nhà xuất bản giáo dục Việt Nam xin được trân trọng giới thiệu với quý thầy cô à, thạc sĩ Nguyễn Quốc Tuấn chủ biên sách giáo khoa tiếng Anh 1 vâng thạc sĩ Lương Quỳnh Trang chủ biên sách giáo khoa tiếng Anh 2 và cũng là tác giả của sách giáo khoa tiếng Anh 1 cùng với uh, tập thể các biên tập viên chuyên gia công nghệ thông tin và bộ phận SEO marketing của nhà xuất bản giáo dục Việt Nam xin được gửi lời, lời chào trân trọng đến tất cả quý thầy cô ạ Hi John and you you are host now I, I'm the host. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I just need to share my screen. Okay. Great. Okay. Fantastic. A very warm welcome. Let me know. Uh, you can hear me okay. Let me know where, where you are in Vietnam. I saw some teachers from Sapa. Lao Kai Sapa from Hanoi. Let me know. Let me know where you uh, where you are. It would be uh, fan fantastic. So thank you very much for your time uh, today, and thank you to uh, VEPH uh, for inviting me uh, for the teacher training session uh, today. Before we start. Before we start, um, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is John, uh, John Croft. Uh, I am from uh, the UK. Um, now I've given you some numbers. I've given you some numbers here. Can you try and guess how the number is connected to me? So what about number four? How do you think number four is connected uh, to, to me, to your trainer today? What do you think? What do you think number four means? What do you think? You can type in the uh, chat box. So we have four years and as, as a trainer. Thank you, Locke. All right, what else? Four, four years you live in Vietnam. Okay. Good ideas. All right. So, yes, if you said four years in Vietnam, you are correct. Okay. You are correct. Bingo. Okay. Well, well done to you. Um, what about 2004? 2004. What do you think? How is that connected to me? What do you think? So, four years in Vietnam. What about 2004? What do you think? Can you type your uh, answer? 2004 became a trainer, okay. You started teaching English. You work in Vietnam education. You've worked in Vietnam since 2004, started to work in Vietnam, okay. Yes, yeah. so actually I took my first uh, teaching job uh, in Vietnam in 2004. So well done to those who got that uh, correct. So I started teaching in Ho Chi Minh City in 2004. Okay. Um, and I worked in Ho Chi Minh City and later uh, I worked in uh, Hanoi. Okay. 
Uh, what about number six? What about number six? What do you think number six means? I have six children. I have six brothers and sisters. What do you think? What do you think? Six members in your family, six years in six cities, six countries. Fantastic. Okay. So actually, I've been working. I've been working for Macmillan Education, for Macmillan Education for uh, six uh, years. Okay. And finally, 2015, 2015. What do you think? 2015. Last one. Started working for this book. Nice idea. Thank you. Get married. All right. Good idea. Six years working for publishing. Good idea, Helen. All right. Good idea. So actually, I started. Yeah, I started working for um, uh, Macmillan in 2015. So I'm based now here in uh, uh, Shanghai. I think you say Tung. Tunghai in, in Vietnamese, right? Shanghai in, uh, uh, in China. Right. So that's a little bit about me. Thank you for typing uh, about where you are today. That's really, really amazing. Um, I was lucky enough to come uh, to Hanoi in 2015, where we did some demo class for uh, uh, Ting An, uh, Ting An 1, I think 1, 2, 3, um in 2015 so that was a great uh, experience uh, and it's great to be back uh, with you guys uh, today today we'll look at two uh, key areas we'll look at teaching phonics so we'll look at teaching uh, lesson one and lesson two uh, using the uh, Tian An uh, book let me find the book okay there we go We'll be using um, uh, the course to, to help you, show you how to teach uh, the course uh, in a very kind of easy, uh, fun uh, and engaging way. Also, we will look at a song, the songs and the chants and how we can uh, teach them uh, easily for our students. So I hope today you will uh, leave uh, or finish the training with more knowledge about the book, how it can make your teaching uh, easy, uh, but also lots of great uh, ideas, teaching ideas, activity ideas you can use in your class tomorrow if you want. Okay, so let's um, jump in to our first uh, area. And we are going to have a look at teaching phonics. I will look at lesson one first uh, and then have a look at lesson, uh, lesson two. So lesson one, here you can see um, we have a, a picture, a picture for the, the context or the topic of uh, the unit, okay? Lesson one will also give you the target sound Okay, and uh, the words. So in this lesson, we will have a look at the, this one. Okay, we'll have a look at the p, p. Okay, sound, letter P and sound P. In this lesson, we have two activities. Okay, listen and repeat, listen and repeat, and point and say. Okay, so two activities, and I'll give you some ideas for how you can teach those two activities. Lesson two, we'll have a look at also, uh, is called the phonics lesson, where we'll have, have some listening activities and some basic uh, writing uh, activities uh, too. So we have listen and chant, listen and tick and 
look and write. OK, and we'll have a look again at different activities for these uh, uh, steps. Just to note, I'll be using uh, the activities from the uh, the Sac Sac uh, Zalvian, okay, Sac Zalvian, the teachers, the teachers book. Um, so I'll be using the activities from here to show you uh, how easy they are to use. But I will also make some small adjustment, add my own maybe creative uh, touch, okay, and I encourage you to do the same with your teaching okay you can use as a structure to help you but you can also uh, make some small edits or changes because you know uh, your students uh, the best okay and and what you need uh, to teach uh, them okay but it's good before you teach the lesson to look in the teacher's book go through the activities see what you like, and then you can maybe uh, adjust or edit depending on your classes uh, and your uh, students, okay? Some of you will have very big classes, 40, 50, 60 students. Some may be smaller classes, maybe with a higher level of English. So sometime you need to uh, adjust, okay? Right, so... Before we start, I also want to let you know about the teaching process. So when we're teaching, it's good to have a process to help us structure, structure our lesson. So in uh, Ting An, we have the G-I-P-O structure. So we have the goal, then we have the input, then we have the procedure, and then the outcome, okay? So we set the goal at the start. What are we going to learn today, okay? Or by the end of the class, what will we know? We have some input as well, maybe the picture, visual prompts to help students understand procedure, step-by-step -step activities that we do, okay? And then finally, outcome. So remember, we have the goal at the start, and at the end, we have the outcome. And we come back and check the G. We check the goals at the end to give our students a sense of uh, achievement. Okay? Now, let's jump in. Let's jump in to lesson one, okay, and warm up how we can warm up or why we warm up, all right? So warm up is good um, as a signal to start the uh, English class, to get our students uh, focused and their uh, attention, especially if we have a big class and they're crazy and they're noisy and we can't control. So warm up is good to try and focus our students, but also a chance to develop some basic, simple interaction between students to build, build their confidence uh, using uh, English, all right? Warm up, we can also introduce the topic, okay? We can engage them, all right? And also, we can develop routine. So we will talk about just a simple, how to open, open the book, find the right page uh, routine. Now, this or these are the warm-up activities I uh, take from the teacher's um, book. Okay, I took these from the teacher's book. So we have some interaction. Hello, I'm. Uh, we have introduced a topic, play the birthday song, happy birthday song, and also open your book uh, routine. Okay, so let me show you uh, how how I would do uh, these uh, activities. I think to engage uh, the students or to attract their attention, I would use uh, puppets. So puppets are one uh, option, okay? 
So you can sort of model with a, a puppet. Hello, I'm John. You might say, hello, I'm Sparky. Ah, and you might use a strong student, okay, to also model with, uh, with the puppet, okay? So maybe model with the puppet first, model with a stronger student first, okay? Hello, I'm da da da, all right? After, try and get them in the pair, put them in the pairs, okay? With your, with your friend, with your friend, with your friend, with your friend, practice with their partner. Hello, I'm da da da. Okay, get them using speaking uh, in English. Okay, as you continue in the course, you can add more challenge. So, hello, I'm John. Uh, how are you? Uh, how do you feel? You can add more challenge later uh, in the units. Okay, as they learn more uh, structure. Okay. We can also, with the topic here, introduce the topic. Maybe we have a, a birthday song to introduce the topic of the unit. You can use uh, some visuals, or if you're very creative, you can make a, uh, the birthday, maybe a birthday hat, uh, maybe a pictures of cake and candles, presents. Okay, set the topic, engage uh, your, uh, your student, okay? You can play the song, they can use physical movement, get them to clap, okay, or dance to the music uh, when you play uh, the birthday song, okay? To add more challenge, okay, with the birthday song, you can change your voice, so change your speed, so sing quickly or sing very slowly, okay? Um, to make it more uh, challenging for your students. So we have some interaction, okay? Maybe a song for the unit. And also we have uh, opening uh, the book routine. Sometime, if you have a very big class, it can take a long time for students to find their books to find the right page um, and it can take you oh, two, three, four, five minutes and you lose, uh, you lose time. So having a good routine, um, giving them instructions, clear instructions can save you time, okay? So maybe model, okay? Opening your books, open your book, page. <gasps> Six, okay, open your book, page six. Can you see page six? Now you do, okay, to encourage your students to do. And then encourage them to check with their partner. Help each other. Help your partner find the right page, okay? That'll save you some time, okay? So you model, they do, check with their partner. Good job, okay? Good job, good job, all right? and make it into a routine. Train your students to make it fast and quick to save you time. So there are a few ideas for our warm-up, okay? Again, you may have your own ideas, so please, um, you can also use or adjust for your own uh, ideas, all right? Now, the first part of the lesson, if you remember the procedure, is the G, the goal, okay? Now, this is very important for a few reasons. If we set a goal for the lesson, we can then monitor throughout the lesson, give them a challenge, a target, and at the end of the lesson, we can come back and check. That will help give them a sense of achievement, okay? Positivity, confidence, okay? If they see they are learning or progressing, okay? So you can focus uh, on the goal, let them know what is the goal. Maybe if they are higher level in English, very low level in Vietnamese, uh, also uh, okay, all right? You can be creative with the goal setting, okay? 
But what I suggest is make it visible, make it clear for the students. And let me show you some ideas. So actually behind me, maybe you can see behind me, I have a, a football, a football uh, goal, okay? So for example, in lesson one, we have three goals, okay? So you can tell the students what the three goals are and you can stick the football, okay? So maybe goal one, goal two, and goal three. You can stick them on the football goal, okay? And you can tell them what the goals are, okay? And then during the lesson, as they complete the goals or at the end of the lesson, you can invite students to come and ooh, score, score a goal, okay? This will give them a good sense of uh, achievement. It's visible and it, it's fun, okay? So that is one uh, idea, all right? So one football for one goal. Make it clear uh, to uh, the students. And the aim is to score three goals in the lesson, okay? So for example, goal one, say the letter P, okay? Say the sound P correctly, okay? That's maybe goal one, all right? And then goal two, we will identify three words with P correctly, okay? So maybe you have two goals, all right? So make that visible, make that clear. Another idea for goal uh, setting, uh, you would draw, you would write or stick the goals on the board, okay, on your blackboard, on your whiteboard, all right? So here we have on the right, say letter P, say sound P correctly, identify three words with P correctly, and pronounce three words correctly. Three goals for the lesson, okay? And as they achieve each goal, okay, you can see uh, Jerry, okay, you can move Jerry. So if they do well and they can all say the letter P, say the sound P correctly, you can move Jerry to the first goal. You move Jerry to the first goal and stick Jerry by the first goal, okay, on the board there, all right? Then when they do the second goal, you move him onto the second goal and then onto the third goal, okay? But if um, the students maybe cannot achieve or the behavior is bad or uh, the goal is mm, so-so, you can chase or you can move Tom closer to Jerry, okay? You can move Tom closer to Jerry, okay? That will tell the students that they need to do better, all right? And if Tom catch Jerry, okay, then they have to do some extra homework or something they don't like, okay? So those are two, two ways of um, making goal setting more uh, visible, okay? Also, you can encourage, um, you know, confidence and challenge and excitement by maybe having a chant, okay? So how many goals, three goals today, can you do it? Yes, we can. Are you ready? Yes, we are, okay? Get them to chant, make it a routine, okay? Teach them a chant, make a chant yourself, okay, for setting, uh, setting the goals. This will get them engaged, interested uh, with, uh, with the lesson, all right? Now, let's move on then um, to uh, the next part. So the next part is the, uh, the input. So here we have uh, the picture, the picture context, okay? And here we can maybe ask them some questions about uh, the picture. We can use the input 
from the teacher's guide. So in the teacher's guide, here you have some uh, input here, okay? You can read the input, all right? You can give them some input in English, or if you want, in Vietnamese, a very low level, okay? And then you can ask them some questions, some basic questions. What can you see? Have a look. What can you see? Tell me. See. See what they know already. Okay. And depending on the level of your students, you can ask different graded questions depending on the level. Okay. But I suggest to encourage communication between students. Ask a question. What can you see? Tell your partner. Tell your partner, what can you see? Get them to tell their partner in, uh, in the pair, okay? If in English, fantastic. If they cannot in English, then Vietnamese is okay, okay? But encourage interaction, okay? Uh, and then see what words, see what words, see what grammar comes out, okay? So ask them questions about the picture. Encourage pair work, all right? Now... Let's have a look at the steps, the different activity steps uh, for teaching, okay? So I take these steps from the teacher's guide, all right? But again, it's a good guide, but feel free to add and adapt uh, in your own way, okay? So I keep these activities, but I change a little bit for my style, okay? So here we have two activities listen and repeat and point and say now when we have instruction like listen and repeat it's good to train the students to give them knowledge of the instructions okay so we can do a little bit of work we can coach train our students to work on classroom instructions all right so for example aha on page three let me find page three aha you can see here they have the pictures of all the classroom instruction from the book so before we do the activity we can do some training so you can ask them, number one, turn to page three, show me your finger, show me your finger, show me your finger, okay? Show your partner, show your partner your finger, okay? Show your partner your finger, okay? Now we're going to listen and repeat. Can you point, point to listen, point to listen? And they try and find listen and point to listen on the page. Check with your partner. Check with your partner, okay? See if they have the same, okay? Show me listen. They show you listen, listen, listen. Good, well done, well done. Show your partner listen. Listen, well done, good job, high five, okay? So do some work with the instructions uh, first. This will help you uh, with the activities. After a few lessons, after a few units, they will slowly, slowly, slowly understand. Okay, but take time, take time. All right. Now, listen and repeat uh, activities. So we can have a look. Uh, what can you see in the picture? Okay, this is a pizza. Mmm, pizza. You can ask students to repeat. Pizza, pizza. Okay. The first sound in pizza, the first sound in pizza is p, okay, p, okay, p. And you can show the flashcard, p, okay. So this book actually come uh, with, uh, with these flashcards, okay. So this is the letter P, okay. This is the letter P. And this is how we write. This is how we write the letter P. Okay. Now, sometimes, 
students will confuse confuse letter and sound letter and sound okay so what i suggest is that you have maybe a picture uh, of the alphabet and you can stick you can paste the alphabet on one side of the board you can put the alphabet on one side of the board okay and this is for the letter letter p all right and also we have the sound okay the sound so this will help the students identify the difference between letter letter p okay letter letter p and sound 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 p, p, okay you can show them the difference uh, using uh, the pictures all right now so you have the flashcard the p p flashcard all right let's have a look at some more activities so we can listen and repeat uh, one, maybe one by one, okay? So you can play the audio, all right? And let's have a look. Let me just check. I have, can you check if it is sound? One, one, listen and repeat. P, P. And you can ask your students to repeat, okay? P, P. And you, again, you can point to the pictures, okay? P, P, okay? So repeat one by one. Pasta. And your students will, re oh, your students will repeat. Pasta, okay? Pasta, okay? So you can play, uh, you can do one by one. They repeat as a, a whole class. You, if you want, if you want, you can get them to point to the picture in the book. Okay, so they point to the P in the book. They point to pasta, pizza, popcorn. So you play the audio again. They can repeat whole class, everyone together. Next time, you can play again. E. P. This time they can repeat together in pairs. Okay, so first time repeat whole class, second time in pairs. Okay, and then after you want to check maybe the pronunciation the third time you play, they listen and you can ask different individual students. Okay, to repeat. Sometime with a whole class. You can't hear the mistakes, okay? So sometimes it's good to ask different individuals, okay? So listen, repeat, whole class, one by one. Listen, repeat in pairs, one by one. Listen, repeat uh, individually, okay? And encourage praise. If they do a good job, everybody clap. Make them feel good, okay? If they pronounce it incorrectly, don't make them feel bad, okay? Still encourage them, still praise them. Well done, good job, keep trying, okay? If you want, one little tip here, I will write my students or I will give students um, these little chopsticks, little chopsticks, okay? Uh, wooden chopsticks and they stick their picture. They stick their picture and their name on the chopstick. And I will keep these uh, in a, maybe in a cup. I will keep these in a cup. And when I want to ask different individual to repeat, I will pick, I will pick one from the cup. Ah, who's this? Ah, uh, Lan Hung, Lan Hung. Okay, listen and repeat. Okay, oh, well done Lan Hung, good job. And then you can choose somebody else, okay? So it's one way of choosing different, uh, different students. We can also get them listen and repeat um, with objects, with the P sound, 
Okay, let me find my objects. Hang on. Da -da -da. Okay, all right, here's my objects. So I would, for example, say listen and repeat. Okay, but they only repeat if they have the p sound, if it has the p sound. So for example, listen and repeat. Pen, pen. Does it have the p sound? Yes. So they will repeat. They will repeat the word pen, pen. Okay. Or we have, whoa, what do we have here? We have a p -p -p pig, pig. Does it have the p sound? Yes, it does. So they repeat uh, the sound. You can also have words without the p sound. So orange, orange. Can you hear the p sound? No, teacher. So they don't say anything. Okay. Book, book. Does it have the p sound? No, teacher. So they stay quiet. Okay. So it's a nice little task to get them identifying or listening for the sound. You can also invite students to come up and hold the objects. They, they love that. Okay. Hold the objects, encourage them to say the words uh, themselves. Themselves. Okay. I mentioned about choosing the pupils, okay, using the chopsticks or lollipop sticks, okay? It's a good way for uh, choosing uh, different students for individual work. Now, once we've gone through the activities for listen and repeat, okay, you can, if you like those activities, you can use them or you can change them or add or do less. It's up to you. But at the end, come back to the outcomes, okay? Just reflect uh, on the goals, okay? Reflect on the goals and review and praise. If they achieve the goal, okay, to say the letter P and sound P correctly, then make sure you uh, score a goal, okay? That'll give them, yes, well done, okay? Give them a sense of uh, achievement, okay? Great. Now, let's have a look at the point and say uh, activities, okay? Let's have a look at the point and say uh, activities. Now, again, you can work on instructions, okay? Point and say, remember, Turn to page three, show me your finger, show your partner, point to point. Wow, point to point. That's an interesting one, isn't it? Check with your partner. Show me, show me, show, show me point. Well done. Show your partner point. Well done. Okay. Work on the uh, instructions. Okay. <laughs> I've got some teachers drawing some beautiful lines on my PowerPoint. <laughs> Now, uh, point and say uh, activities. So again, we can point and say the sound on the board. So we can paste maybe the sound on the board, okay? We can get students to point their finger at the sound, okay? You can put the words on the board, okay? We've got pasta. Okay, and we've got, what else have we got? We've got popcorn and we have pizza. All right, so they can, again, they can point. They can point to uh, the words on the board, okay? You can do this as a whole class. They can do it as pairs or you can invite individual, come. Come up and point to the pizza. Come and point and say uh, pizza. And you can invite the students to come up, okay? They can point in their books. Uh, you can point uh, on the board, okay? We can also do some clap chants, 
Okay, some clap chants. Students love uh, the chanting. Um, so here they would say P, P, popcorn. Okay, P, P, popcorn. And they will point to popcorn on the board. Okay, P, P, popcorn. P, P, popcorn. All right. And they can repeat P, P, pasta. P, P, pizza. Okay, little chants um, to get them uh, pointing and saying. All right. Another nice practice activity for point and say is called show, point, say, pass. Okay. Um, show, point, say, pass. Let me just try and delete these lines. You can't, otherwise you cannot read. <laughs> Let me try and delete these lines. Hang on. Uh, Screen. I'm trying to find Swan in the chat. I can't find you, Swan. There's too many people. Sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll just I'll just continue. Ah, okay. Oh, okay, it's okay. Right, so no, another one is uh, the uh, point or show, point, save, and uh, pass, okay? Now, how this would work, okay, you would show to the students, okay, you would show to one or to the class, okay, show, you point and say, okay, so you show, point, say, pizza, and then you pass it to the first student. That student will show to the next student, okay, point and say, pizza, and pass it to the next student, okay. That student will show to next student, point, say, pass, okay? So the pizza will move around the classroom, show, point, say, pass, okay? After maybe two or three students, you can add pasta, okay? And you can do the same, show, point, say, pass. So these can move around the classroom with students showing, pointing, saying and uh, passing, okay? Great, okay. So after those point and say activities, okay? Again, don't forget to reflect on the outcomes, okay? Review, how well did they do, okay? And remember, if they did well, how did we do? Okay, you can stick you can stick the goal or the football in the goal, okay? So they identify three words with the p sound correctly, okay? All right, and one little tip here, when you're praising uh, students, you can praise the whole class, but also try and praise the individuals uh, as, as well. So try and remember who you've praised each class I would always write down maybe who you praise each time and make sure next time maybe you praise other students. That'll give them a nice uh, sense of uh, achievement, okay? Um, a couple of extra option here. If you have time or you finish um, the two activities quickly, and there are some extension options here, all right? So one is uh, a little hopping, a hopping chant. So you can put the flashcards um, on, maybe on the floor at the front of the class, in the middle of the class, or even on the board if you want. 
and invite one student uh, to come up, okay? And they jump, okay? They jump to the first um, picture, which is popcorn, not pasta. They jump to the first uh, picture, okay? And say, P, P, popcorn. They then jump and point to the next picture, P, P, pasta. They then jump to the next picture, P, P, pizza. Okay, and the next student will come. So they jump from picture to picture, okay? As they jump, they point uh, and say uh, the picture, P, P, pasta, P, P, pizza, okay? This is a game called three in a row, all right? So maybe two teams, you split the two, the class into two, okay? And here you have P words, some they know already, maybe from level one, some from this unit, some maybe they don't know, it's okay. So they take turns to pick a word. So team one picks a word and they point and say, example, pizza, okay? If they are right, all right, they color the circle in their team color or they put a counter on the circle. Team two, then choose one. For example, popcorn. If they are correct, okay, they color uh, popcorn their color. The first team to get three circle in a row is the winner. Okay, the first team to get three circle in a row is the winner. And this one is called Kim's Game. So you have a grid, you draw a grid on the board. A, B, C, one, two, three, all right? And you paste different flashcards, okay, in each square. So one flashcard, one square, okay, with the sound P, all right? You then turn over, okay, oh, sorry. They look for 30 seconds, they memory, they memorize, they memorize, then you turn it around, and then you can ask them, where's the p -p pizza? And they have to tell you, oh, it's in A1. So you turn over and check, is it correct? Yes, it's correct, okay? So they try and remember where the uh, pictures are, okay? Kim's game. Right, very good, good job. Lots of information. Let's check who is listening. Okay, let's check who is listening. A quick quiz. How many years was John teaching in Vietnam? In the chat box. How many years was John teaching in Vietnam? Let's see who was listening. All right. Well done. You got it. Number two. What's the correct teaching process for Ting An Tu? So is it G-I-P-S? P-I-G-S? G-I-O-S or G-I-P-O? Which one is correct for the teaching process? Which one is correct? D is correct. Yeah, goal, input, procedure, and outcome. All right, well done. What are the two activity types in lesson one? What were the two activity types in lesson one? Point and say, listen and sing. Listen and repeat, point and say. Listen and say, point and repeat. A, B or C. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the answer should be B. Okay, listen and repeat and point and say. All right, well done. And what resource is available for presenting the lesson vocabulary and sound? What resource is available for presenting the lesson vocab and the sound? Which resource? I'll give you, I'll, I'll, yes, I'll give you a clue. Yeah, these ones, these ones, okay, okay and the sound uh, flashcard as well. All right, great, well done. You're still, you're still, you're still with me. Now, 
Let's move on and have a look at uh, lesson two, okay? So this, after the, we introduce the sound and the words in lesson one, no, now we can focus a bit more on the phonics uh, with some listening and, and writing activities, okay? So three activities, listen and chant, listen and tick, and look and write, okay? So let's have a look at some activities. For lesson two, again, you can do a, a warm up. So maybe you can uh, review last lesson. So maybe you can do a quick um, flash activity, okay, where you will flash the pictures. So for example, so a quick flash, and the students have to tell you what they see, okay? Or this one is more challenging. You cut the hole in the color paper. You cut the hole in the color paper and then you put the flashcard behind the paper and you show to the students and they have to look really carefully and they've got to try and guess and say what they think is behind the paper. OK, that's a really nice one for attracting their attention. OK. If you want, you can do the clap chant to review. P per pasta, P per pizza, P per pasta, P per popcorn, okay? And I'll talk more about chants uh, later. So I'll talk about the listen and chant in the next part, okay? I will come back to this in the next part. In this part, we'll focus on the listen and tick and look and write. So for listen and tick, here we have the goals. You can see the goal at the top. Remember to focus on your, on your goals uh, again, make it clear to the students. Okay, so here they can recognize the words popcorn, pasta, okay, and pizza in the sentence structure. Okay, so for listen and tick, they will listen and they have an A and B, two options. Okay, they have got to listen and tick the correct option. Before you do this activity, it's good to model. It's good to practice first. So you could paste two picture on the board. Example, you can paste pizza on the board and you could paste that, okay? So paste two pictures on the board, okay? You can use um, a, a puppet here as well and get then the puppet to point to the picture on the board, okay? And say, I like, for example, we have pasta. I like pasta, okay? If it's correct, if, He's pointing to pasta and he says pasta, okay? The students stand up, okay? If it's incorrect, they cross their arm. So he says, I like pasta. Is it pasta? Yes. So they, they stand up, okay? If he says, I like pizza and points to pizza, it's not pizza. So they cross, they cross their arms, okay? So do a little bit of pre-work pre uh, with uh, the picture first, okay? We can then work on instructions, remember? Page three, okay, listen and tick, remember? Work on instructions, this time listen and tick. We can model the activity on the board, okay? So we will stick uh, popcorn and uh, pasta uh, on the board. Okay, so we stick uh, on the board, the same as in activity four. Okay, we paste them on the board uh, and model the activity. Choose pupils to come up, okay, and model the activity, okay? So for example, maybe one student come up and we have two picture, pasta, pizza. I say, I like pasta, okay? And the student have to, come and tick under, under the picture, okay? All right, so is it A or B? 
if you want, if you want also, you can have A and B. And you can post that under, under the picture. So we have A is pizza and we have B is pasta. Okay. So you say, I like pasta. And one student comes up and tick next to the correct, the correct picture. Okay. Again, encourage them to tell their friend uh, first. Okay. Is it A or B? So what I'm saying here is try and model. Model, listen, and take on the board first. Model on the board first, okay? Bring students up, maybe encourage them to tell their friend, is it A, is it A or B? Okay, work together first, all right? Then we can play the audio once, okay? Let's have a quick listen. Unit one, and lesson two, activity four, listen, and tick. One. I like popcorn. Okay, and students in their book, okay, they will maybe check with a partner. It's A or B, A or B, A or B. Work with a partner and they tick A or B. Okay, and then you can do for the second one. So model first, then audio, do it in their book. Check with a partner first uh, before giving uh, the answer. OK, and when you choose a student, OK, again, you can choose uh, using maybe using your uh, chopsticks or lollipop sticks. OK, choose a pupil, one to respond and encourage others to say, yes, well done. Good job. You're correct. OK. So that was listen and tick. And then also for the look and write. All right. Some different activities we can do for look and uh, write. So remember, we have the th or the letter P. Where's my letter? There it is. Letter P. We can get students to write the letter, the shape of the letter in the air. Maybe a big one and a small one. If you're a teacher. Remember to turn around, yeah, but turn around. So big P, copy me, big P, small P. So in the air, they can also write on the back of their friend. So in pairs, they write the P, shape of the letter on their friend's back. They, they, love, they love that one, okay? It makes them laugh and uh, scream and uh, it's good fun. Um, you can also write uh, on the board, okay, the big letter and the lowercase letter, big P and the small P, okay? Remember maybe to draw the lines, draw the lines on the board. Remember the big P is high, right? And the small P goes down. So <laughs> remember, remember to uh, use the lines or the grids they use here, really important for their handwriting, okay? So invite students to come up. Also, you could make a mistake writing the letter. So you might write, for example, a D, and you can invite students to come up and correct your mistake and write P, okay? That will create more awareness for the shape of the letter. You can use the body, use your body or your hands to make the letter, uh, the letter P. Use their bodies, okay? Students love uh, to be physical, all right? Again, look and write, work on the instructions, okay, on page three, work on the instructions, remember, okay, so point, yeah, point to look, okay, point to look, point to write, show your partner, remember the instructions. They can then do individual writing work in activity five on the grids, all right, some students will be faster some maybe better writers, some slower. So remember to think of some extra activity, okay, for fast students. Um, for example, here the teacher printed out some small pictures of a pizza. And then on the pizza, the students can write letter P, 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 P. They can fill in the pizza 
with the P letters. So you, they write the P letter all over the pizza. P -p 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 -p. Practice uh, writing uh, the letter or the shape of the letter P. All right. If you're very creative, wow, look at that. It's two ideas. So this one is um, shaving cream for men who shave, right? You can squirt on a tray and then you can maybe use the chopstick to draw the shape of the letter in the shaving foam. Wow, very cool, very creative. Or you can use the modeling clay. Um, this one, the second one here, you can bend, right? Or you can make the shape of the letter with the clay, okay? Nice ideas for getting physical uh, with making letters, all right? And again, remember, come back for the outcomes. Remember, the goals, check those outcomes. How well did we do? Give them praise, okay? So write letter P, yay! Recognize the structure I like. Yay. Okay. Good. Now, quick quiz. Quick quiz again. How many activities are there in lesson two? How many activities? Lesson one was uh, listen and repeat, point and say. How many in uh, lesson two? There were three, I think, weren't there? Yeah, was it listen and chant, listen, tick, and then uh, look and write. Okay, so three activities. Name one activity from the training for developing students' writing skills. Ooh, tough one. Okay, so yeah, lots of different activities. So you could use, um, what have we got here? You could use look and trace, yeah. If you can use tracing activities, uh, that's a really good idea. Uh, remember air writing, back writing, uh, the clay, the shaving, the shaving cream. Okay, lots of different ways that we can develop uh, writing skills, all right? What is one strategy to help students understand how to do a listen and tick activity? Oof. Okay. So sometimes, yeah, getting students to understand what to do in the activity is the key. Okay. If we can show them visually, so like some of you say, maybe we can model the activity. Maybe we can model the activity with the pictures. And then we have uh, the A and the B card on the board, okay? And then you do the activity on the board first. That'll help them understand uh, what to do, okay? All right. So that was lesson one and lesson two, okay, with uh, developing phonics. I hope there were some nice activities there uh, that you can use. Hopefully it's nice, simple, easy to follow uh, with your students, especially for a short, a short class, maybe with lots uh, of students in your class. Now, this last part, we're going to have a look, a quick look at songs and uh, chants. OK, songs and uh, chants. All right. So sometimes uh, well, songs and chants are a great thing. OK, so here we have two type of musicalized activity. So we have listen and chant in lesson two. So here we see the target sound and the words. So P. OK, pasta, pizza, popcorn, simple sentence structures. I like pasta. I like pizza. This also will help with their natural pronunciation, stress, rhythm, and intonation, okay? And also, uh, these chants will be fun and engaging. 
we will also quickly look at the let's sing in lesson three okay again great for practicing the target language but also good for pronunciation the rhythm fun engaging and also if we add some actions okay then good for total physical response okay so let's do this let's do this again i will um use ideas from the teacher's guide so i'll use the um i will use the procedure the different steps from the teacher's guide but again maybe i'll add my own creativity my own style okay now so here a little warm-up so again like before, don't forget your goals. Don't forget to introduce your goals for each uh, for each lesson for the three activities. So three activities, maybe three goals. OK, then we'll have um, a warm up. OK, again, maybe you can be quite physical with the warm up. OK, you get them punch the chant. So P per pasta, P per pizza, P per popcorn. OK, get them to punch. Uh, the chant. It's a nice way to warm up. It's, it's physical, but also review the last uh, lesson. Okay. My advice, my advice is for a chant to paste the pictures in order. Paste the pictures in order on the board. And they, they can point P per pasta, P per pizza, P per popcorn as they chant. Okay. I lost my popcorn. I lost my popcorn. Who ate my who ate my popcorn? Let's have oh there he is. Hang on. I found I found my popcorn. Okay. So think about a little punch uh, chant for a uh, warm up. Now, let's just go through some easy. Um, let's go through some easy uh, steps. Okay, for uh, the song and uh, chants. All right. So step one, okay, use the picture. So activity three, we have a picture. So this will kind of help the students understand the context, okay, of the chant. All right. And give them a challenge, a measurable challenge. Example look at the picture okay look at the picture can you find or can you say five five things you know in the picture okay five things you know all right depend on the level of the students you may need to help them with the instruction in vietnamese depends on the level okay but give them a time challenge okay 30 seconds five things can you find five things tell your partner okay this is a good way of engaging with the picture interacting with the partner get them to review find out what they know from the picture okay after they can share uh, with the ideas with the class okay right step two we can focus on the structure okay so here the structure i like pasta okay i like pizza all right so to help the students i suggest to use visuals okay use the pictures Okay, use the pictures, um, flashcards, and maybe gestures as well. Okay, so maybe I like, okay, and then action for maybe pasta. Okay, I like mm, pizza. I like popcorn. Okay, use gestures, uh, use uh, actions. Okay make it visible using visuals 
So on the board, you can write I and then like. Okay, I like. So I like. And then you can have, well, we have uh, pasta. Okay, so paste on the board. I like pasta. Use the visuals, okay, to help drill. Okay, drill the sentences. I like pasta okay so stick them on the board then later you can then if you want you can replace with the writing okay so i and then like and pasta and you also here look you have with the flashcard you have pasta okay you can use the word cards uh, as well all right so start with the visual then move to writing and then you can ask maybe one student to come up and replace the writing, replace the writing with the picture, okay? That's a good challenge for your students. A good challenge for your students, okay? So using visuals, using writing, and then uh, go back, replace with visuals again, okay? Now, with uh, the chant, first you could play the chant one time, okay? Play the chant one time and encourage the pupils to stand up and maybe uh, clap, all right? So let's have a look and listen. Unit one, at my birthday party. Page seven, lesson two, activity three. Listen and chant. Students would stand up. They can dance. P P Pasta. P P Pizza. P P Popcorn. I like pasta. I like pizza. I like popcorn. Yummy, yummy, yummy. 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 Okay. The first time, play once. Get them to stand up. Get them to move. Okay, they can move their body to the rhythm and clap with the chant. Okay. P per pasta. P per pizza. Okay. Use the clapping. This will help them get the rhythm of the chant uh, first, okay? Her next, next, listen and repeat line by line, okay? Again, we can work on instructions first, okay? Listen and repeat, okay? Ask them to point, show me your finger, show me your finger, point to line one, point to line one. So they point to line one, P per pasta. They point in their book to line one, okay? And we would listen and chant line one, okay? So you play line one, P per pasta, pause, okay? And they would chant, okay? They would chant, okay? You can do whole class, all right? You can do teams, okay? Team one, okay? Listen and chant. Very good. Now, team two, listen and chant. Team three, okay? Or boys and girls, okay? But go maybe line by line. Break it down. Break it down uh, to help your students, okay? If you want to challenge your students more, an extra challenge, uh, this is one uh, you write the chant on the board. So P per pasta, P per pizza, P per popcorn. You write the chant on the board and then you would erase maybe some of the words and they have to try and uh, remember what you erased and they then try and do the chant, but this time some parts are erased. Then you do it again, erase some more and they try again. So it becomes more and more difficult, okay? 
and gradually you rub off, rub off, rub off. Um, so it's a nice um, little uh, challenge for uh, the students. All right. Step five, we can play the chant again. We can develop actions. So maybe we can have P, P, pasta. Okay. They might make the word, yeah. Oh, is it uh, P, 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 pizza? Okay. Get them to make actions for the key, the key words. All right. And then you play the chant, and then the students do actions as they listen to the chant. Okay. If you want, two teams. Team one will listen and chant. Team two will listen and watch and do the actions. Okay. And then you repeat. Okay. So one team will listen and chant, one team will do the action, okay? In this way, we're helping break down the chant, break it down into small parts, okay? Sometimes a song, the chant could be quite long, the students cannot keep up, they feel sad, unmotivated, but this way we can guide, 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 structure, 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 build, 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 okay? To keep them on track okay if you want you can do it in pairs too so with a partner one will listen and chant with the audio and one will do the action okay then after they change all right if you have time extension you could play the chant again uh, and you could do a team or group competition all right a team or group competition okay i like to divide my class into groups okay and i will give them a chance to sing uh, or chant maybe one line or one part of the chant if they do a good job <sighs> what do i do ah i will stick so each group will have a maze on the wall so each group has a maze on the wall for their group OK, if their group sings well, after one student will come up and they will try and start the maze. So Polly has to try and find the road to the pizza. OK, so if the group sing well, so group one, if they sing well, one student come up and start. Maybe they have uh, just maybe 10 seconds to start the maze. OK, 10, 9 eight seven six five four three two one stop and they go and sit down team two then they would listen and charm if they do a good job one student will come and start their maze okay and it's the first group to finish the maze uh, is the winner this one gives more uh, excitement okay and it makes them want to sing or chant well so they can have a chance to do the maze okay Hmm. So if they do a good job, they can start the maze. OK, they try and find the road to the pizza. Polly, find her pizza. All right. And don't forget, uh, last step is to reflect. Remember the goals. Maybe reflect on your goals. OK, check progress. Give any feedback uh, for the uh, students. All right. Now, last part. Let's have a look at the song. So let's sing in lesson three. And let me give you some ideas. So again, like the chant, use the picture. We have a beautiful picture, happy birthday. Look at the picture, it's a birthday party. Use the input from the teacher's book, it's a birthday party. There are people, there's a cake, there's a pizza, a pasta. What can you see? Who can you see? Can you point? Can you point to the pizza? Can you point to the pasta? Okay. Get students pointing on their books. Okay. Use the picture first. Then familiarize with the rhythm, the song, the chant. Okay. Familiarize with the song. Let's listen. It's 
Notice actually there is a nice clapping rhythm. There's a, there's a nice clapping rhythm. So let's listen and do that again. Clap to the rhythm first, okay? Get them used uh, to uh, the rhythm. Get them to move, stand up, and clap to the rhythm, okay? Next, uh, we have some listen and uh, repeat. I suggest maybe, again, break it down. It can be quite difficult, a long song for the students. Some lots of words and quite a long song. So maybe break it down line by line, okay? So play one line, pause, maybe play it again, get the students to maybe to sing along or clap along, okay? Uh, line by line, okay? You can get them to repeat each line as a whole class, as groups, as individuals, okay? Listen for any... Uh, pronunciation um, or mistakes, okay? But play maybe line by line. Pause, get them to try and repeat it uh, or play it again. They sing it along. Do line by line, okay? Break it up. Remember, lots of praise uh, for, for your students uh, with this one, okay? All right, and then if you want, you can play the song uh, uh, again, okay, uh, line by line. So actually, the first time, they can listen and repeat to you, okay? They can listen and repeat to you, or you can use the puppet. So it's my birthday party. You try. It's my birthday party. Good. This group. It's my birthday party. This group, it's my birthday party. Good. Next one. I like pasta. This group, I like pasta. This group, I like pasta. Okay. Line by line. And then this step, you can do it with the music. Okay. So play the recording line by line. Pause. Encourage them to sing, sing along. Okay. If you want, you can use whisper, sing in a whisper. It's my birthday party. I like pasta. Or you can get louder and louder and louder. Okay. So you can use different types of voice or different emotions. As, so as they sing, they can use emotion. So a happy voice. Okay. It's my birthday party. I like pasta. The pasta is yummy, okay? Use a happy, uh, smiley uh, voice, okay? Again, you can have them work in groups to make action for the song, okay? If it's a long, difficult song, give each group a different word. So group one, pasta. Group two, pizza. Group three, yummy. Group four, Popcorn, okay? And as they listen, when they hear their word, they stand up and do the action, okay? So group one, pasta. When they hear pasta in the song, they stand up and they do the action for pasta, okay? Group two, yummy. When they hear yummy, they stand up and do yummy, 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 okay? So listen and do uh, action. Okay. In this way, again, you help to break down the song into small parts, make it easy for uh, the students. If they're higher level, if they're very good, um, if they're very good students, uh, one challenge is to play the song and then you turn down the volume 
and the student try and keep going they try and keep going without the uh without the audio very tricky maybe for higher level student so example you Turn down the audio. They try and keep going. Then you go back up. Like pizza. The pizza is yummy. Maybe down again. They try and keep going. Try and keep going. Like popcorn. The popcorn is yummy. More for advanced students. Okay. And again, don't remember to come back to your outcomes, uh, your goals uh, at the end of uh, the lesson. Okay, reflect on the goals. All right. So, God, you are very creative teachers. I think you're artists, aren't you, with your coloring? I've got lots of beautiful red and green lines on my screen. <laughs> uh, right, I think I have. Oh, I can do it now. Okay, there we go. All right. So a little quiz to finish. What are the two types of musicalized activities in Tiang An 2? What are the two types? Which ones did we look at? Can you remember the two types of activity? Yes. So it should be a yeah, listen and chant. So there's a chant and a song. So listen and chant, and then let's sing. Okay, let's sing. So two activities. Name one benefit. So what are the benefits of chant and uh, songs? Can you give me one benefit? Mm, I mention, I talk at the start. What are they? Can you remember? What are the, can you think of one benefit? Relax, yeah, they're, they can be funny, yeah. Yeah. Happy, all right. Easy to remember and follow, hopefully, hopefully, yes. But also they will help practice, right? Practice the structure, practice the center structure, practice the words, pizza, pasta. I like pizza, I like pasta. They help with the uh, pronunciation. They can hear, they can hear uh, English, okay? Model the pronunciation, maybe the rhythm of English, okay? and they can be fun and uh, engaging, sure, sure. <laughs> and last one, what is the strategy to help students follow the song? What can you do? What can you do to help them follow? It's too long for them. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can familiarize first, play the song, get the rhythm, clap with the music first, then maybe line by line, line by line, listen, repeat, listen, repeat, and then play again, uh, maybe whole class, small groups, use actions, okay? This way we can, we can break down uh, the song, okay? Right, so that was listen and chant, okay? And let's sing uh, as well. So well, well done. We had a oh a, a long session. Thank you for uh, listening. Um, we had a look at what did we do? I can't remember. Listen and sing. Uh, we had the um, sorry. Let's sing. Listen and chant. And also phonics. Lesson one. Lesson two. Hopefully, there's some ideas. Uh, the structure. The Goal, input, procedure, outcome, um, nice, clear steps 
uh, and activities. Hope it was good for you. Thanks for listening. Nhà xuất bản xin phép được uh, dừng buổi hội thảo tập huấn ngày hôm nay. Uh, một lần nữa thì xin thay mặt cho uh, lãnh đạo của nhà xuất bản giáo dục Việt Nam, các thầy cô, tác giả, biên tập viên, kỹ thuật viên. Uh, Trân trọng cảm ơn, cảm ơn tất cả các thầy cô đã dành thời gian quý báu của mình để uh, tham dự buổi tập huấn ngày hôm nay. Và uh, John, uh, thank you again for your very, very interesting presentation today. And I hope that all teachers are happy with you. Okay, John, you want to say something with our teachers? Sure. Yeah, I think uh, I want to say thank you very much for coming today they seem very or well, you seem very uh, passionate uh, teachers very passionate about education and uh, it's great that uh, you know vietnamese english teaching is in your hands and uh, good luck good luck with your teaching and uh, hope to see you uh, face to face uh, next time hopefully uh, this year or, or next year and uh, good luck and uh, see you again soon i hope Thank you, John. Thank you, and see you soon. Và vì hôm nay, à, vì năm nay cũng có cái hạn chế về dịch COVID, cho nên là thầy John cũng không thể sang trực tiếp Việt Nam. Nhưng hy vọng sắp tới thì à, John có thể sang đây và trực tiếp face to face với các thầy cô. À, một lần nữa, xin cảm ơn John. Cảm ơn anh rất là nhiều đã cùng đồng hành với nhà xuất bản giáo dục Việt Nam. Cảm ơn các thầy cô và mong chờ được đón nhận sự ủng hộ và hợp tác tiếp theo của các thầy cô. À, xin chúc các thầy cô có một à, cuối tuần vui vẻ hạnh phúc và tiếp tục đồng hành với sự nghiệp giáo dục của mình. Vâng ạ. Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại các thầy cô trong thời gian sắp tới trong các buổi training tiếp theo của nhà xuất bản giáo dục Việt Nam.